Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to my channel. I am Coach Sherry, and I just want to wish everyone a great Friday. Today is Friday, and I hope that you made it a great week. I am going to be going live tonight. I hope you can join me. It'll be about 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I do have the live already posted, so you can hit the bell so you can be notified when I do go live. But I also wanted to wish people safe travels. I know this weekend is the homecoming for North Carolina A&T State University in Greensboro, North Carolina. And that homecoming is considered or it's called or better known as Jiho, the greatest homecoming on earth. Now, I've had several videos about this, and if you check back last year around this time, I did go live. I was at that homecoming. I am an Aggie Pride mom. My center child is a graduate of North Carolina a and State University. And so I've gone to the homecomings in the past. It definitely slowed down to nothing when C-19 came about. But I remember when I first went, and I was thinking this is not the greatest homecoming on earth. <clears throat> my homecoming for my alma mater, Lincoln University, the first degree granting HBCU in the country, that's the greatest homecoming on earth for me. You know, it's like going home. It's your family reunion. So of course, whatever your family, wherever they celebrate their reunions, that's going to be the best one to you because you know everyone there. Everyone knows you. You know they love you. You know all the ins and outs of the place. It might be your homestead and our campuses. That's our homestead. So I have fond memories of many of the buildings, you know, the classes I had taken, the dorms I lived in. So going back is very nostalgic. And so that's the greatest homecoming on earth for me. However, I have to give North Carolina. A&T State University kudos because they do have a remarkable homecoming. A&T, which is what is the referred to as, is the largest public HBCU in the country. And so it's a ton of people there. I mean, thousands and thousands of people. Last year, I couldn't believe all of the people there. I want to say the population is 10 to 12,000 students. I know my daughter's graduating class was the largest in the history of the school. She had 1,900 students graduating with her. And, you know, so when they all come back, when they all get together, oh, what a time, what a time, what a time. And this is definitely Aggie land. Um, November, October is typically when HBCUs have their homecomings. So if you are anywhere between Pennsylvania and Florida and every place in between at any time during those months, October and November, I highly recommend that you also check to see what schools are in the area and when their homecomings are. And, you know, even if you didn't go to that school, even if you don't know people that attend that school or have attended that school, you are welcome to come. That's just how it is for homecoming. All are welcome to celebrate and just to gather together. They typically will have parades, so the band will play. They'll have local schools come and play, and different organizations in the community will participate. They have a big football game. Um, usually, I know for me growing up, just from high school, homecoming was always against your rival team. I don't think they schedule it that way. <laughs> now they schedule it so that they could play against a team that's almost a sure shot win for them because that's nothing nice when you lose the football game on your homecoming day. And um, and then they also have tailgates. And let me tell you, tailgate is big business now. I understand that many schools are now charging alumni and people to tailgate. I know that they have vendors that are being charged to set up and sell whatever items. A lot of times it's paraphernalia, great Greek paraphernalia. If you're part of a Greek organization, and again, if you're around the time when there's a homecoming near where you're going to be, go there because you'll find some of the most unique paraphernalia paraphernalia. <clears throat> also, with the tailgate, they have people that um, you have to pay, and it's a few hundred dollars. But when I tell you people, tailgate is not just putting up a pop-up tent anymore. It was carpet, you know, like rugs, sofas, fire pits, 
you know, propane grills with pots and pans, cooking real, real food, music, plants, TVs. It was everything. And, you know, it was wonderful because you could just walk down. It was almost like tailgate lane. And you walk down in the middle and on both sides is different people tailgating. And because it's a homecoming, because it's like a family reunion, you do feel like your family. So it's like, what's up? You find yourself in, in other people's tents, maybe eating some of their food, drinking water, whatever. And just hanging out, dancing, the music, every tailgate um, tent would have different music, but then there's some that would have a main stage kind of DJ and everyone's just gathered in the middle doing line dances and step in and just everything. Um, the Greeks on campus are gathering around their plot. So on the HBCU campus, and I believe at the PWI as well, Greek organizations will have areas around campus where they have, it's called their plot. They'll have bench, a bench, they'll have, um, and it's painted the colors with the symbols and whatever other, um, you know, items go along with the organization. Typically is near a tree, so, and they have rocks and things, and it's just really organized. So when you walk by, you know who it belongs to. So if you're part of that Greek organization, you are welcome to go over there. So I'm a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And so when I'm on campus, you know, passing by, especially if I have on any kind of paraphernalia with Delta Sigma Theta on it, sorors walking by, we all speak, greet each other. You know, it's just so welcoming. And um, again, this weekend is North Carolina A&T State University's homecoming. Shout out to them. My homecoming was earlier in October. I believe it was the weekend of October 12th. I did not go, but I know that it was a grand time. I think it rained on my homecoming. And let me tell you, when I was in school, it never, ever, ever rained on on homecoming weekend. It was always beautiful weather. Here in the Carolinas, it is getting cold. Oh my goodness. Yesterday was freezing to me, but it turns out beautiful during, you know, as the day goes on in the morning though, it's so chilly. This morning is chilly. It's going to be, I think like in the upper sixties. Tomorrow it is going to be 70 degrees. Greensboro is a little bit further north from Charlotte, but um, I, they, they're, weather typically mimics ours. So it's going to be about 70 degrees. But again, because it's thousands of people there, and as long as the sun is out, it's going to feel hot out there <laughs> for sure. Um, I may pop over. I know my girls are going. My one daughter's coming home to go. She's doing a um, homecoming tour, she's calling it. Her homecoming for her school, she's a senior, was last weekend, and she said they owe her nothing. They had a good time. Um, she feels like she got her money's worth. <laughs> and so I'm happy that she had a great time because that's what it's all about. No matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, you need to glean those great memories and make those moments count. And I'm going to have my live talk a little bit more about that tonight because y'all, it is almost Thanksgiving. Can you believe it? Oh, so, so many plans to make and figure out things, but we are here again at the eve of the major holiday seasons with Thanksgiving and then right around the corner from that, of course, is Christmas. So we have to prepare, prepare ourselves, but every day just make it all count. And that's why, you know, find something to laugh at every day when my children were younger, especially when they would come home from school. Well, we usually would pick them up and when they would get in the car, you know, most of the times parents would say, how was your day? And kids, especially young kids, will say it was good or it was okay. And there and that's it. And you know, it's hard to pull out anything else from them from that. So my husband and I decided to not ask them that question, but to ask open ended questions. So one of my favorite questions was always, What made you laugh today? What made you laugh? What was so funny today? Because that would make them think about what went on during the day and recall it and then tell it. And it's more than the than just, did you laugh today? Yes, that's a yes or no qu question. But when you say, what made you laugh today? That really, again, gets them to think about it. And then they tell me and I laugh and it's, you know, it's a good thing. So what ended up happening is throughout the day, they would always make note of those 
moments that gave them joy, that made them laugh. And because they knew that question was coming after school. So when you are speaking to your young people, have them recall something special for that day. And later on, I'll tell you why that's so important. But in the meantime, thank you for coming and checking out this video, stopping by. I appreciate you. It's been my pleasure talking with you. And I am Coach Sherry. Remember, practice practice so hard that when you play when you get into play you will always play to win have a great day and stay safe